Welcome. So today we're going to talk about something we don't normally cover, and that's PowerPoint. And you know, there's just so much you can do with PowerPoint. So what I decided to do is put together a short video of those things that I find most useful. So if I'm building a simple presentation where you know you might actually do it, and you start up and you go file new presentation, and you go out and you type in Excel, Excel case and then we go through and we start adding things. You know, I say new slide, and I start adding bullet one. And bullet one, my top or pur purpose, and that kind of thing, this is where you end up with, right? And, and you see it's kind of boring, right? Not so exciting. But if you come back and we look at presentation two, all of a sudden you notice design ideas pop up here. We scroll down to we find one and there's all kinds of little cool things. It kind of does like a little cell like right? <laughs> in a weird kind of way. And you can pick different little notions here. Mm. This is a little bit cell kind of like squares, a little more he heavy straight lines, right? For Excel. Anyway, you can see all of a sudden we turned it, I like more color, a normal case into an extraordinary PowerPoint. And you do this through design ideas, which has the actual AI inside of Microsoft is looking, coming up with a as the match your Excel thing. So we can just say a numeric case. Get it? Excel numbers and a numeric case. So now I got the first one set. It's kind of an exploratory type of thing. So the next one you do is just there in a new slide. And we're going to do purpose. And we look at this and you get design ideas here. And we look at the purpose like, whoa, look at, ooh. That's kind of good. I want to put words in, so the purpose has got to have words. So I picked this one. It doesn't really have a spot for words. Other, than, It's got a nice target, though. This one's kind of good. It kind of follows the theme of Excel case, right? And this is going to be to show how Excel can be presented in PowerPoint. And so... It, that's really just it. So we go through and we're starting to do that. So we're gonna start building this presentation using design ideas and doing some more of the advanced features that we can pull within PowerPoint. Let's just continue and we'll go from there. So let's have some fun with this. With the morphing, what you do is you create a slide, you go over here to transitions, um, yeah, get the right slide, transitions, more. What you do is we take it, we duplicate it. We basically duplicate slide, do the same, then you move things around, and basically you're creating a morphing thing. So the idea is we grab this slide. This this is actually a pivot table from Excel. We put the pivot table in here. So now we have this morphing. We come over here and you morph. And we should, should be able to work. And you see how it morphs. So we go into presentation mode. What we're able to do, and we go through presentation mode, Excel, and you see the slide morphs. So it's kind of nice. You could do the same thing other ways, like all Microsoft products. There's plenty of ways of doing things. You can apply animation, those kind of things. But it's really a good way of morphing. So if you have a presentation, you want to morph. You slide this content over, and then you have the bullet points, and then maybe you put some animation and some pointers on these slides, and then have talking points about what's going on. So you're able to bring in. A slide right from Excel, in this case, the pivot table, or yeah, chart. And we take that pivot table chart and we actually stick it inside a PowerPoint. So I think that's quite useful to morph things. Next, we're going to look at you know some animation. Just keep it easy. I know sometimes it's kind of like cheesy, so you you want to get over effectively animation on a corporate thing. It's just too much. A lot of people just want to get right to the numbers. And these kind of charts are morphing and more impactful, but animation's got a spot. Basically, you take animation, you pick this, you click that, let's fly it in. Then we click the other table, we have a pivot table here, we fly it in, and we can do that. We can combine morphing and flying in on a, on a different table as well, but the way I always like to test it, I have fun building these presentations. One at a time, we went through the morphing, we fly it in the pivot table, and voila, it flies in. You can see how, how it goes, and that part works pretty well. It has a good use of animation. Of course, you can do a lot of animation. And you can put the pane up here. You can play it all. 
show how it does it and do it that way too. Um, there's all kinds of little things that we can do with animation and you know, regarding your duration starts, things like that. So just things are big about all the people get kind of um, weird about these kind of things. So I wouldn't dwell too much on animation. One of the things that I always find boring for lack of a better way of saying it, is when we come up here and somebody comes in and they have, well, we need an agenda. So the first thing they do is to come up with an agenda side. It's just new slide and they add, you know, they tell you, well, we're going to talk about the purpose and then we're going to talk about more of this, that's what we do. Of course, we spell it right. And we start this and we create this agenda side. Yeah, you know, it's a typical side. We always see it, right? And then what we really notice is they, they, it's not bad enough that you have this. So at first what they do is they, they copy the slide. A lot of times they copy the slide, they go to the agenda side. So first we go purpose and then we come back here to show where we are and they paste it back down and they'll, they'll show where they are and they'll highlight it in some way or method morphing at the next agenda point as they go into everyone. Now, usually when you have big decks, you always see this agenda size. So I never really was a big fan of that. So what a much better way of doing the agenda side or not to really do agenda side is to make your PowerPoint very interactive. We can do this by inserting zoom slides. So you click insert and zoom and you can create section slides, right? Summary zoom. And it's really great because then we can do the purpose slide or the shift key because my, my keyboard here, the morph slide, the link pivot table slide, and the market penetration slide. And we hit enter. Now it creates sections and we have all these sections automatically created. Now I can have 20 slides in each section. But what I'm doing is now we can have the flow of the presentation, right? It's a little bit different. Flow of presentation. This way, we're not really presenting things in a manner that is just linear, like we saw the other slides and you just click through it. The other thing I've seen a lot of is people will have these slides and they'll pick the boxes and put it in the corner, make little boxes and you know, it was a consultant many years and we always did that. But I think the flow of this makes it so much nicer when it's automated, especially if you're turning over a presentation to a client or something like that. So now when we go to the presentation mode, we can play it of course, but I like to click on it. You see the purpose slide. You zoom in and then you click through it. You go through every one of the purpose slides. And when you're done with that, you go to the morph slide. Click it. Then you go to the morph slide. You see, you're starting to go through the deck of slides for each section. The linked pivot table slide. And we got the fly ins. Then you click it and it automatically by default goes back to the original zoom slide. And we can have these whole slides and, and it just works. And it's a nice way of guiding the presentation. It takes you back to the original agenda or flow of the presentation slide. And you can see this and you can be like, oh, you don't have to duplicate the slides and do all that. It just creates a live link interactive and flow back. And that's just a good thing to do. And you can, of course, edit it and change the way the behaviors work for the Zoom. But I find this to be a really, a better way of presenting things. So I was going to actually leave in here, but then I thought about it for a second. You know, you can, I talked about it and then it, it occurred to me, to me I didn't show it. So we click on this area where the zoom slides, you see zoom tools, and you can click on zoom tools. And what that does is it allows you to customize the zoom. And there's different things. You know how we return to zoom, we go back to the, the zoom brick. You can take that on and off. The default's on, so you always go back so you don't get frustrated. Zoom effects. And, you know, I put bevel on here because I like to bevel my slides. I think that's kind of cool in that regard. So you can bevel things. And you can do all kinds of things in here. And so you get the different choices. I just wanted to let you know you can have the duration and things like that. So there's a lot of things you can do within the flow of the presentation. I just wanted to add a little more clarity. You don't have to just make it zoom one. You can actually make it kind of nice. Way different than just having a simple agenda as we talked about. But there's certainly a, um, a better way of doing presentations as I had previously mentioned. So when you saw these presentations, one of the things we'd like to do is kind of link these up with Excel. Um, and there's a trick. I mean, it certainly works a little bit better with the Windows-based PC. With the Mac PC, you, you can copy it and you can come over here and do a paste special. And with this paste special, you can put a worksheet object in there. And the idea is that when you update something on the right side, it updates automatically on the left side. However, I had some issues with that. I like that, it didn't update automatically. 
But I found that when I did, see I closed this down, and what I did was I came back over here, and I took worksheet, worksheet object and opened it, and then I changed it. What you'll see is the numbers magically update from one to the other. So when I formatted them, or anything else I wanted to do with them, the formatting everything would carry from the one object to the other. But but you got to be kind of careful about it because, like I was saying, it you see it just updates and synchronizes, but it still opened up separately. I had to do it like this and like like that. In the Windows version, it was a little bit cleaner, but it is an option. At least when you're doing something, you know you can still operate in Excel and keep things going and see, keep that object working like that. And that's just another good tip for how to link numbers and have them interacting. So after a little investigation, I, you know, I decided to say, hey, what's going on here? Because when I went up and updated this, I knew that it works differently. The challenge is, is that I am a Mac user. I have a um, MacBook Pro. And, you know, maybe things operate differently in Windows. So I just duplicated the same exercise, except I came over here and I opened up Parallels. And in Parallels, I have this and I pasted the same link. So 100. And then we come back over to Parallels and look, voila, it's instantly. The difference is the file name is exactly the same file name. So it works on the Windows version, certainly works on Parallels, but does not necessarily work cleanly on the Mac version. On the Mac version, I had to open up the object to make it work. On the Windows version, I did not have to open up the object. Same thing, go in and you basically highlight what you want to bring it in. Right click, copy, and for those of you who don't know, it's kind of cool, right? So we run parallels to look at everything. I click paste, special, paste link, object, okay. And then when you update it, it updates automatically as you saw. So it works smoother on the Windows. So you have a Mac version and a Windows version. And so you can get the same thing to do it. So if you're on a Mac version, you really want this to work, just pop it open in parallels and perform the same action. I got away with doing all the other information linking, but when I had to change files on Microsoft inside a Mac environment, that was a little bit daunting. But the good thing about this is to wrap this up, here are five or six good things that I like to do on PowerPoint presentations that make it just that much more exciting. So when I update objects and everything else like that, we can have it live feeding in. We have the zoom charts, the morphing, you know, we can bring in the, um, we can link to the, all the data we can from Excel and bring it in nicely. We can use animations and those kind of things. It just makes your PowerPoint presentations that much nicer. I hope this video helps and it certainly should be giving us something to be a little bit more creative in the presentation. And if my Microsoft ad capabilities, I'll add videos.